Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Todd Traver, N2MUZ, okay? And he is worried. He has a 500 watt um, in-fed half wave, 40 through 10, and uh, he, it's worked fine for him. He just purchased a 500 watt antenna. Let's look at a couple things. He said there are a couple bands. He's got a, a, a transceiver. Okay, so it puts 100 watts to tuner, which takes care of the antenna. Okay, this is a 49 to one ballon, very good. Okay, he might, I don't know what you've done with the extra terminal, you can just put a counterpoise on it, you run it to ground, it's gonna hit ground for the, the uh, through the shield of the cable to your ground rod anyway with your lightning suppressor there, okay. Now, so far so good. He says, however, on um, 17 and 12 meters, 12 meters, that the natural SWR of the antenna is well over 3 to 1. It is, um, the actual SWR is greater than 3 to 1. That's supposed to be a greater than sign. Okay. Now, what he's worried about is if he puts in a 500 watt amplifier. Well, the first question is, um, is, does this amplifier handle 500 watts? Because if you put your radio here, your transceiver, to a uh, amplifier, okay, then if you were to put in a tuner, it would go here and then to the antenna. Now the problem is that this tuner has to be rated for at least 500 watts and better yet more than 500 watts because you're going to get some uh, energy going this way. You're also going to get energy coming back and both of it the tuner has to have the capability to capture that energy and turn it back around to the antenna on the next cycle. Okay, so his question is, um, now I'm looking at this, see if he has a tuner. I don't see a tuner mentioned in here. Okay, um, now I'll tell you what I have done. Um, I have an amplifier, but I don't have a tuner that will handle that power. So the antennas that I use have to be less than 2 to 1 SWR, preferably less than 1.5 to 1 SWR. Okay, and then they'll work fine. Uh, and that's how I use it. I, I don't have a tuner in my setup except for the one that's in the ICOM and if I'm using that tuner, I won't use the amplifier, okay? So uh, is it gonna blow up your ballon if the thing is designed for 500 watts? Do it, have fun with it. Um, if you have to put a tuner in there, you're, you've gotta put a tuner in there if the thing has greater than two to one SWR because the amplifier does not have a tuner in it and does not like, especially if it's a transistor, does not like having power shoved back at it. Okay, because that power has to be dissipated somewhere and it's in the final amplifier that it's dissipated. And so there are protection circuits in there that will cut back the input power to keep it down to the point where your transistor finals won't overheat. If you get an antenna tuner out here, get one that's rated for seven or 800 watts or something like that, and then you can tune it uh, on those bands. Although those high bands, 12 and 17 and 15 and 10, uh, you don't need a lot of power to get 
pretty long distance on those, but uh, some people like to have that uh, either way. It says, should I be concerned that the unknown could be damaged or become unstable if used? Um, if it's rated for 500 watts, it should be fine. Now, there are two things that can happen. The ferrite core inside that antenna tuner, if it gets too hot, which it will, uh, if you put too much power through it, it can shatter. And then you will immediately have an entirely different situation on your hands. It can get so hot that it'll melt the plastic case. Okay, the other thing that can happen, and this can happen, is that as, as the thing is used, you can actually, it's crazy, I know it sounds crazy, you can saturate the core with magnetism. This is a weird topic we don't talk a lot about in the ham radio. But you can saturate the core to where it cannot handle any more magnetic field. Okay? If you saturate the core, then your SWR will immediately blow high sky, sky high. Okay? Um, so those are those three. You can shatter it which is disastrous. Uh, you can have it melt the plastic, which is equally disastrous. You can have it uh, saturate the core, which is real easy to fix, just reduce the power. And it should go right back to the way it was. Uh, if in the process of saturating it, you overheat it or something like that, it is possible it won't go back to where it should, so check that thing out. But it is rated for 500 watts. That means there's some give and take in there somewhere. There's gotta be. But um, yeah, so if you have this three to one SWR lurking in there or higher, you may want to just use, uh, bypass the amplifier and use just the transceiver on those bands, which is what I think I would do to be on the safe side. Uh, one thing I note that I have to do with my, I have to manually switch bands so I know if I'm going to 17 or something like that. Okay, so there you go, there you have it. I hope that helps, gives you a little idea of what's going on um, and uh, gives you some ideas uh, how you can work around it and operate around it and so on. So. If any of you out there would like to help support this channel financially, which I do encourage, you can go to decastler.com slash support and look for a way that works for you. Also, uh, please click like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Also, we do have a monthly giveaway. Go to decastler.com slash giveaway, all one word, lowercase, and uh, learn the details about uh, what to do because you you may be seeing this video months after I made it uh, but this way you can still participate in the giveaway so until we next meet 73